cats and kittens. This is Parker Puckett, and I'm reviewing what Matt brought me from Disney World. So, first thing is this, and we turn it around, you can see it's signed by all the characters. And then, Matt also got me this bobblehead, well, Funko Pop, from Disney World, it's from Jurassic Park. And then, you got Deadpool bobblehead with his uh, two swords. It looks pretty cool. And then I got this uh, hat. It says, I'm having a Dory moment. See you later, cool cats and kittens. Have a great, fantastic day. What's up, cool cats and kittens? It's Uncle Mad here. Hope you've been following along on the channel recently. If you have, you know, we've been rocking through a series of videos from my recent vacation down to the Orlando area where we hit up Walt Disney World as well as the Universal Orlando Resorts. Um, if you have been keeping up, you know this past Wednesday we aired the final video from that series, our character dining experience at the Riviera Resort, which was the very last Disney related thing we did before we packed back up in the car and hit the road back here to Nashville. It's kind of hard to believe that that was basically a month ago at this point in time. We we're down there the last week of July. Like we came back on August the 1st, I think we came back. So it's been crazy. It's been a month since then. So I've been going through the videos. I'm actually editing one of the last ones right now. So I'm editing ones you will, s I'm not gonna do it. We're gonna get lost in the time loop if I start talking about what I'm editing, what you have and haven't seen. But I wanted to make a video now that we're about a month out, kind of looking back on the trip, because if you watched what we've published uh, up to this point, which by the time you see this will have been everything, you'll see, didn't really stop and talk a whole lot about the overall aesthetic, what the changes of the park, the differences, the little things peppered in here and there throughout the trip, but never really, really broke down the overall trip and said, this is what's going on, this is what's different, this is what's good, this is what's bad. And now that I've had a month to kind of go back and let it sink in while also kind of reobserving it through editing the videos, I thought it would be cool to kind of wrap up the whole series with just a video of me kind of thinking through my thoughts and kind of giving a full recap, a full assessment of the trip and everything, you know, because it's a very different type of Disney trip than what you usually would get in these unique times that we're all in. So uh, right off the bat, obviously one of the biggest questions right now is, is it safe to go to Disney World? It's not really safe to go to anywhere if you believe what you're seeing in the news and stuff like that. You know, it's it's one of the things that's made this situation so difficult to navigate is there's no real 100% way to safely navigate life right now. So Disney's not safe, but the grocery store's not safe, you know. Short of having no breach of your own home, just you living in there yourself with no contact to the outside world, nothing's safe, but so is Disney safe in comparison to other things? Heck yes. Absolutely yes. And I think it's only going to get safer because at the time we went, stricter mask policies weren't really in place here in Nashville and the surrounding areas. I mean, I think maybe right around the time we left was when the first kind of mask mandate was put into effect. And even then it was, you know, very different. So, those are going on more around here, more around the country. I think that's going to make just general people more comfortable with the wearing of the mask. So as people go to Walt Disney World, they'll become more comfortable with wearing the mask in their everyday life. It'll be second nature once they get to Disney World. And going into that, while we were at Walt Disney World, as it was that early on in the process, I think we were there the second week the parks were open, I saw next to nobody not wearing their mask. You know, everyone saw you see somebody with it down, not on their nose, not properly, but whatever. I mean, the fact that people in this new world, this new unique situation were that compliant down at Disney, um, is kind of incredible. And I really didn't see, have to see that many cast members like pointing out to people like, hey, don't do that. Hey, pull your mask up. Hey, you know, everybody just seemed to have accepted, you know, if you want to go to Disney World, if you want to have this type of experience, it's mask deals, part of the process, you know. Universal, I did see one person, family, because this, and this was had just recently become a policy when we went, was that you couldn't pull down your mask to drink or eat something. If you were drinking or eating something, you have to 
you know, kind of step away from the main flow of people, find a place where you can be spaced out, be stationary before you can take your mask off to eat or drink. That was relatively new when we went down there. And I saw one like entire family walking through uh, the Jurassic Park area of Universal Orlando, all kind of sipping beverages with the mask down and a team member at Universal, you know, flagged down and said, hey, excuse me uh, to drink or eat your whatever. You're gonna have to step to the side and be stationary before you can remove your mask. And, the father of that family gave a very nasty look to the team member, which, don't do that. Nobody's, you know, telling you these things out of spite or malice. If you're at a place that's requiring these type of things, these are low-level, like, $10 an hour people that are having to kind of enforce these policies. So, you know, if you don't want to follow them, don't go to the places that have those policies. It's pretty simple. But outside of that, I saw one teenage girl while we were in line for Kong Skull Island who just had her mask completely off. But other than that, the entire time we were down there, I never saw anybody not wearing the mask when they were supposed to wear the mask. You know, there probably were. You know, I've seen mixed things. You know, other people have said that they're seeing 20% no mask. I'm like, I don't know about that. Even Disney Springs, where I've heard, has been one of the less compliant spaces. I really didn't see that many, if any not complying with the mask rules. And you kind of would understand it at Disney Springs because there's not as many kind of roving cast members to patrol that type of thing. Like at the parks, you know, there's a lot of people, there's cast members just about every step of the way, whether it's like at a little Dole Whip stand or a soda snack stand, or they even have a few teams that are just kind of walking through the crowds to make sure everybody's following it. They don't have that at Disney Springs. So, but like I said, still didn't really see that at Disney Springs. So, and this is the comparison. You'll see it a hundred million times from people is Disney safe? It's safer than your grocery store, 100%. I just actually just ran to Publix, I'm cooking some fresh dog food for Oli, spoiled brat that he is. And while I was there, I saw, you know, two, three people, no mask on. Nothing like that at Disney World. Like the first day I got back, like, you know, I haven't you know, I've followed the rules, but I've not been that person who's been like super judgy if I saw other people not following it. But the first day we came back from Disney, I'd just gotten so used to seeing everybody in their mask all the time. I went to a gas station and I was just like, oh, oh. I was like panicking because I saw people without a mask on. And then I was like, you've never been like this. Why are you like this? And I was like, I just came from this closed environment where everybody was following the rules, no questions asked. And it just kind of had me in a different mindset. And I had to kind of, I've had to kind of reacclimate to what the rest of the world is like outside of Disney with that type of thing. But, um, but yeah, in terms of the mask being like the kind of catch-all, whatever, if it is, down there, 100% compliance, everybody's wearing it. Uh, Disney's now offering free, this has occurred since I've been, this is a new development. They're offering free COVID testing to their cast members, which it's actually, they've set up a site on site at Disney. It's also free to the public, but it's kind of geared towards cast members because, you know, they're there every day. They're going to be just as at risk, if not more so than anybody else. Um, so that's a good step. They're taking a step in the right direction. And just to kind of give you a better idea of if it's safe or not, I don't have COVID. It's been a month since I've been there. I got a test shortly after I got back, came back negative, and now it's been three weeks since then. No signs, no symptoms, no issues. I survived Disney. So there you go. I mean, that's the best example I can give you. I went there, no problems whatsoever. And if you look at the stats, if you look at the data, nobody seems to be having that issue. There's been a few isolated cases where somebody was at Disney and then, or, and it's not even able to be traced back to Disney. You know, that was the big concern with Disney as with any, you know, thing that's been reopening is, you know, is there gonna be an outbreak? It's not just a matter of, is one person gonna happen to catch it? It's been, are we gonna cause a second wave, a huge outbreak, a huge issue with it coming back? And, you know, that hasn't been the case. They're, they haven't had a huge spike from people going back to Disney. It's been, safe people have been going there people have been following the rules people have been doing what they're supposed to do so off the bat is it 100 percent safe no but nowhere is but i think it's safer than most places you could go so you know i don't want to harp on that for too much longer i've already gone eight minutes on that so let's just talk about it is it fun is it worth it should you go to disney world this is important you know some of my very first videos on this channel we're talking about could we take vacations? When can we take vacations? What could vacations be like? Here's my assessment of Disney. If you're going on one big trip a year, all blow out, this is my Disney World special trip, special once in a lifetime trip, do not take it this year. You will not get the Disney experience that you deserve or that's worth your money. My family, for example, we were planning to go to Disney in October 
kind of celebrating my mom's 70th birthday, her special birthday year, as she likes to call it. That trip is now 99.9% .9 canceled. The only reason I leave that slight chance is that it's, we haven't taken it off the books officially canceled yet because what we're planning on doing is moving it to next October, but next October is not available for bookings right now, so we're just hanging on to it just to hopefully make it a smoother process when next October opens up to just transfer what we've got on the books for this October to next October. When that'll be, I don't know. But that's a trip I would not take right now. That's, you know, it's myself and six other family members going on a big, like, nine, eight, nine day trip. Not gonna be able to get our money's worth. Not gonna be able to have, we'd still have fun. We, you can, this, that's the thing. It's not a miserable experience being there. You'll still have fun. It's will you get your money's worth. And on a big trip like that, not a chance. There's no way, no how, you're gonna get your money's worth on a big, long trip like that because it really stands out how some of the parks are, you know, in the community they call them half day parks. Is this a half day park or is it a full day park? Right now everything kind of feels like a half day park. You know, we missed out on some stuff on the trip some rides, some experiences, just because more our own fault, piddling around, not really paying attention to time. We spent maybe two hours of our day at Hollywood Studios at Baseline Tap House. So if we, you know, we missed Smuggler's Run, we wouldn't have missed it if we hadn't spent all that time at Baseline Tap House. But outside of that, we did everything we wanted to do at Hollywood Studios. And the fact that we had that extra two hours just to sit at a little bar restaurant tells you you got time to do stuff if you manage your time wisely, but you know, you can't park up. It's really hard to leave the parks. That was one thing we kept talking about that was an issue was every day it was so brutally hot while we were there. And about one, two o'clock, we were like, it would be great to go back to the resort, splash around the pool, cool down for a little while, come back tonight. But there is no tonight. Every park closes by like seven or eight o'clock. So by the, if you left the park at one, two o'clock, by the time you got to your hotel, changed, got in the pool, splashed around, had some fun, got back to your room, changed back, transported back to the park. There's no way. You just wouldn't make it back to the parks because of the limited hours they're running. And the park hopping, I think that's, you know, that sucks. Park hopping's awesome. It's awesome to like, you know, on a whim be like, hey, you know what would be really fun right now? Everest, let's just go over Animal Kingdom. That's awesome. But you can manage. You can find ways to still have fun spending only in one park a day. That's what we did. We, you know, we had fun every single day I think where it's the limited hours is where it's the most hurt because you're, I don't want to say trapped, but we felt like we couldn't leave the parks because if we left the parks, there's no way we'd get back. So we had to just manage our time and find ways to keep ourselves busy in the parks. So if you did something like what we did, we were basically there three days. I think that's manageable, especially if you're a person who regularly goes. If you're a person who you know knows what you like, knows what you want to do, can kind of grind it out and just find some other stuff to fill time, you can do it. Short trip, two days, three days, pick your two favorite parks, Magic Kingdom. I'd say go Magic Kingdom just because it's the easiest to fill a whole day with because it's got the most experiences and attractions. But pick Magic Kingdom, one other that you really like, you can still have a fun day. Two to three days. We did three days, it was perfectly fine, we had fun. Like I said, if you're a person who doesn't go that often, if this is like one of your few times to go experience Disney, I would not recommend going right now because you're gonna miss out on so much. Just so much of the experience, so much of what makes it special and different from other amusement parks just isn't there right now. So that's kind of my summary of it is, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Universal, oddly enough, it's seemingly and you know, it's not as effective as Disney is because I think at least for me, Universal has been more about the rides and stuff like that. I'm not really that into the you know, the shows or the fireworks or anything like that at Universal. So not having stuff like that going on at Universal doesn't really affect me because I can still go ride uh, Hagrid's three times in a row, which was insane, a great experience. Um, and you don't really need that much time. You know, we did one day at Universal, split time between Islands Adventure and Studios, and you know, there's maybe two things, Jurassic Park, Rip Ride Rocket, that I would have wanted to do that we didn't do. So, I mean, Universal's, like, perfectly fine. You know, I think it's great. Actually, you know, I think I mentioned this in the video. I might have just glossed over it, though, but I actually bought a Universal annual pass while we were there. Oh, hold on a second. I'm making dog food. One second. 
Okay, so we're back. All right, so as I was saying, on this trip, I purchased the Universal Annual Pass. Now, I don't necessarily plan to be going to Universal like 30 times over the next year, but I mean, they're running specials right now to try to get people in the parks. The Annual Pass deal they were running was like too good. It's like, I think it was gonna be like $170 for like a one day, two part ticket. And then for like only like $120 more, you get an annual pass with no blackout dates, with a bonus three months attached to it that includes all these other per perks that they have for annual pass holders. So it was kind of like, if I go, I just have to go to Universal one more time in the next 15 months and I've got my money's worth. So it just seemed like almost dumb to not do it at that point because Unless, I don't, I don't even say it because who knows what's going to happen in the next 15 months. This, it's too hard to predict. But I would say there's a good chance I'll go back to Universal at least one more time in the next 15 months. Because I'm still tentatively thinking I might go down to Universal. Just do like a two, three day Universal trip. That week in October when I was supposed to be down there with my family. Might not do Disney just because I don't know that I would need to do Disney. I, I think I've experience what the Disney experience is like. But I could do like two to three days in Universal with my annual pass, get my money's worth, have that done, and boom, I've already paid it off. Then with the 15 month window, we're going to next October as well. So even though Halloween Horror Nights is canceled for this year, tragedy, RIP my friend. I'm covered for next October, so I can go next October when my family goes, and I've got an annual pass, I'm good to go, I'm in. I don't have to worry about any of that. I can even maybe go another time during the Halloween Horror Night season next year. I can go in the spring. I can go like I did this year in the summer on like a short trip with my friends, you know. It was, why not get it, you know. I pretty much thought it's before all this started that I was going to get a Disney annual pass this year for the exact same reasons. I had like at least three to four Disney trips planned, but after this trip, I don't see a reason to get a Disney annual pass right now because, you know, A, I don't until things kind of change, I'd say until park hopping comes back or the hours get re-extended, those are the two ones that just hit me the hardest where I'm like, I don't, I had fun on the trip, I enjoyed myself, but I don't necessarily need to do it again anytime soon. Whereas like a lot of times I leave Disney and I'm like, I can't wait till I'm back. I gotta plan the next trip right now. But I think if I went again, it'd be kind of the same. I would, you know, cause that's one of the things when you can park hop, when you've got all the extended hours, you've got so much more time and so much more opportunities to do so many different things. Whereas now it is what it is. You know, you can do everything you kind of want to do in three days and there's not, I, don't, I just don't have that same desire to get back there as quickly as possible that I usually have. It's weird. It's weird, whatever. But Universal, I don't really have that either with Universal, but I bought an annual pass because it was a good financial decision. Well, at least in my mind, I'm not an economist, but, but you know, now I've got that. So I've got that incentive to go back there. And also I think it's a better experience right now than Disney just because the thing that separates Disney from other theme parks is all the pomp, the circumstance, the extravagant things, the fireworks shows, jumping park to park, going to different resorts and checking out the restaurants and stuff like that. You know, going home for a bit, coming back. It's just not there. Yeah, you know, I can't put it into words more than that. You know, like I said, if you're somebody who goes all the time, like you know, me and my group of friends tend to do, you can go, you can have fun. I would, I would recommend going on a shorter trip, not doing a full long trip, because if you're doing any of the parks more than one day, you're just gonna get bored of the parks and tired of them, but two to, day, two to three day trip, if you kind of go regularly, is fine. Also, I'm jumping all over the place now, but another reason I decided, I've gone on a lot. I think I've made the points I wanted to make, though. It's safe, you can go there. I mean, you know, it's as safe as anywhere it's gonna be. Disney, it's not the same, but if you're somebody that knows Disney, goes there frequently, you can still have fun. But I wouldn't recommend doing a big, long, huge, expensive version of a Disney trip. A short, quick trip, you can do that. And here's another thing. Sorry, I was trying to wrap up, but I just remembered something. So Disney has started to offer like some crazy single day ticket deals or multi-day ticket deals for Florida residents. So I think once again, those are non-annual pass holders. Those are people that might buy more merch, spend more food money than 
somebody who's just coming in and out of the park on a regular basis like an AP is, I think there's a good chance that that trickles over to non-Florida residents soon because one of the things that's been unique and somewhat surprising to I think Disney and myself as well, if you watch my early Disney vacation, talking about going to Disney vacation right now, videos where I was predicting stuff, I predicted the parks would be packed to capacity every single day. Whatever the capacity was, they were gonna pack it. That's not true. They have not got the influx of people they thought they would. It's been a lot quieter than they thought they would. And so they're slowly starting to roll out some special ticket packages, some special incentive things to try to get some people back in. I mean, there's not wanting to do anything to get like a massive influx of people coming because they don't have the capacity for it, but they're not coming anywhere close to the limited capacity that they've set. There's, you know, I think somebody told me they're able to take 15,000 people in the Magic Kingdom right now a day. That might not be right. Don't quote any of this, but I think this is what I heard. They're able to hold 15,000 in the Magic Kingdom with the capacity restrictions they have right now, and they're averaging between five and 6,000 a day. So they're getting about half of what they can get in every day. And that's why they've cut the hours. That's why they're not doing fireworks. I mean, they've said the fireworks is a, you know, crowding issue, but other parks have shown if you make people stand in certain areas, make sure they're spaced out, especially because there's not that many people in the park to begin with, you can do fireworks. The problem is the fireworks are a very big expenditure for Disney. And if they've got 5,000 people in there, they don't want to spend, they can't afford to spend the money it would take to do a fireworks show for those 5,000 people. So a lot of the cutbacks are coming. Some staff have been re-furloughed. Some restaurants and other things are not opening just because it's not financially possible with the amount of crowds that are going right now. So, you know, I think there's a good chance that, I don't know if this year, it might come early next year because they might still think the holiday crowds will pop back up. We'll see. But I would expect there might be some discounts coming for non-Florida residents for out-of-towners like myself. I'll keep an eye on it. I'll see. But like I said, Universal, the experience there hasn't really changed that much. I mean, their hours are much shorter as well. But at the same time, you can you can just fly through there and get it done. It's it's not that different. That's why I, I think I'm more like, well, I've got the AP. So, as things stand. Next time I would go to Disney and the current climate is, oh, here we go again. As things stand, the next time I would be going to Disney would be October of 2021 with my soon to be rescheduled family trip. Obviously a lot's changing, a lot's evolving throughout the process of this whole thing. So things might get better. Things you know might improve and there might be reason to go back sooner. I kind of would like to go do the, you know, I had set my goal to do the Disney Marathon this January, but I don't know if it's even happening. And I don't even know if I'd want to go to Disney if the circumstances and the things are still the way they are. Universal, on the other hand, I am tentatively planning to do a two to three day trip in October. And maybe again in the spring, maybe again in the summer. So I'm, you know, just quick trips, like nothing big, nothing fancy, just like, weekend just go have some fun get away for a little bit but that's where to stand i uh i'm just kind of shooting from the hip on this i didn't really plan anything or write anything down so probably why i rambled and went a little too long on this much longer than i probably should have but uh if i missed anything if i didn't cover anything that you are curious about you can leave comments down below i'll respond to those you can hit me up on social media i'm on twitter instagram i got a blog Hit me up over there. I'll answer questions anywhere. I got nothing but time. Was that one of my catchphrases? I was going to do that. That was right. One of my catchphrases was I got nothing but time. Cool. So I got three catchphrases now. I got nothing but time. Don't stand so close to me. And I'll see myself out. But like I said, leave a comment down below if you have any additional questions about the trip. Hit me up on social media if you have any questions about the trip. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications because even though... Sadly, we have no more Disney and Universal videos to come right now. We're going to keep going. I've already got some in the can. Everybody's favorite, Marvel Monday's coming back. Me and Nephew Parker, killing it. Doctor Strange, coming soon. But until then, continue to practice what we practiced while we were down at Universal's Orlando Resort and Disney World Resort. And don't stand so close to me. 
I'll see myself out.